The cafe racer style is all about being clean, simple, and aggressive at the same time. And that's something you always have to sort of keep in the back of your mind as you're doing one of these builds. And in today's project, we're going to inch the frame a little bit closer to getting some cafe racer style by cutting off all that unnecessary stuff at the rear pillion section of the frame. We're going to bust out the tubing bender. We're going to bust out the welder. And we're going to get a rear hoop on this bad boy. All right, so looking at the rear of the bike, we got a ton of fat back here that we have to work with. Obviously, this has to be in some sort of hoop to give it the cafe racer look, but what I really personally like is when they have a little bit of an upsweep, and you need that for some clearance when you're at full suspension compression as well. You don't want that hoop to be right here, and you only get that much movement. You want it to be up here to get all the movement out of the suspension. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use these gussets underneath of the frame here for some reinforcement, and we have some interior slugs as well that I'm gonna weld to to keep everything nice and clean and sturdy. And even though this isn't exactly structural, it's good to have all your welds be nice and structural anyway. So that is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna figure out some of the measurements and some of the angles we want out of this, and then we'll head over to the tubing bender. All right, so after a little bit of thinking with the bike, here's how I've decided to do this. We're gonna do this in three different pieces, two of which are gonna be the legs that connect to the frame and then kick us up into our upsweep. And this third piece, which we're gonna do first, is going to be the one that we definitely know we need, the 180 degree hoop at the end of the thing. And then once we have all three pieces, we're gonna weld them together and then get that welded onto the bike. But first, let me bend this hoop and then I'll show you a little bit better what we're thinking. Now guys, this thing is super easy to use. We have tons of detailed videos about the tubing bender on our website, but pretty simple. You just literally clamp your pipe in there, get some leverage going, and walk this thing down the teeth. You will have a bend in a piece of tubing. Pretty simple stuff. All right. That's that. Now we can bring this back. Move this pin over. And that's a little tight. We're just gonna go one out. And we could get some more teeth in. Right, so we just hit 180, but if I release tension, you'll see how much this springs back. So we gotta go a little bit past so that that spring back leaves us sitting at 180. Once we finish the bend, took it over to the bandsaw, trimmed it up to the correct line. Now you'll notice that we are gonna make this hoop in three different sections here. Now that is a limitation of all tubing benders out there, not this one specifically, but when you have this type of bend this close to a bend on a different plane, it's just not possible. The tubing bender needs something straight to hold on to in order to bend. So we're gonna make this in three pieces our two 20 degree up sweeps for the kick up, and then our 180 degree hoop at the rear, and then we'll weld the three together.
We're going to take a quick break here for a second because I want to give something away to you guys. I'm giving away the eight piece compression test kit that I used in episode one. All you got to do is subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment on either this video or the first episode of the series and make it count because I'm picking the one that makes me laugh the hardest. Should be a pretty fun comment section. So let's get right back into this video. All right, so here is what we're working with. Here's our three pieces. I went ahead and taped them together just so you guys can see what it'll look like once it's welded in. And just picture this an inch lower in this spot right here as well. But you can see if I hold this flush, we got a nice upsweep here. We got plenty of clearance for our suspension travel, and this is gonna give us an awesome cafe racer look. So let's go get this welded together and get this ugly bracket out of here as well. And then we'll come back and weld this into place. Now, when you're working with a project like this one, you don't want to waste any metal. So take your time lining these up. Make sure there's no air in between your gaps. Make sure you don't blow through. And the last thing you want is your metal to warp around on you from getting too much heat into it. So take your time, stitch these together, and keep checking them as you go. We got our three hoop pieces welded together, so now we can go ahead, clean them up a little bit, grind them down, make them look nice, and then we can head back to the bike, start test fitting. Wait a sec. The lift. A little easier on the old back. All right, here we go. Finally getting into the good stuff. The real first step of the build here, and one big hurdle for me was taking the cutoff wheel and cutting off the frame. Now, of course, before I cut the frame, you do want to have a plan in action, and I did. I spent a lot of time looking at what other people did and made sure it would make sense for my build. Now, I know this sounds old and cliche, but take your time, make sure these cuts are nice and straight. Not only is that gonna make it easier to weld on the rear hoop when we have to do that, but it's also gonna look better as well. All right, there's our old hoop. On to the new one. Now, most of the rear part of the frame is cut off. However, what I wanna do is go forward a little bit and cut the tubular section of the frame out from that gusset. Reason being, I'm gonna reuse that gusset underneath to help support the rear hoop and just add a little bit of structure, so I wanna keep that. Here's where we are. We've measured, we've cut, we've welded our hoop together, and we're just about ready to go. I wanna show this to you guys real quick before we do what's going on here. I saw a lot of pre-built kits for rear hoops. They come with these little internal slugs that are the same diameter. Gives you something easy to align onto, and also it provides a little bit of a backer for your welding there. So we went with that same idea for our bike right here. I have them tacked into place deep underneath there. Won't be in our way, can't see it. Gonna work nice and good. Now, our hoop. As you can see, tiny bit out of shape here. A Little bit of spring back, I think, when I welded the, uh, the upsweep in there. No big deal, it's only off a little bit. So, 
ratchet strap to hold it together. Let's send this thing home. It's gonna look so good. It's gonna look so good. Ignore the spots that I missed. I am gonna have to go back and finish weld this thing, but I think it looks great. You can start to see a little bit of Cafe Racer style, which is very exciting. Now, one last small adjustment I need to make to the frames. I have to cut off all the unnecessary tabs, they're called, whether it's there to hold up the wiring loom or the helmet lock or to hold pieces of plastic covering up the air box. We're not gonna need any of that, and it just messes up the triangle, so went ahead and cut that all off. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode, but the next one is gonna be even better. We're gonna be doing some sheet metal fabrication work, some design work. I have to figure out the electrical train on this bike, and I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna hide all my electrical, my components, and my battery. We're gonna be bending, we're gonna be cutting, and we're gonna be welding, so stay tuned for that one. Leave us a like, drop us a comment, tell us what you think so far of the build. I'm JD, make sure you keep it right here at Eastwood to do the job right.